Hi, I'm Richard from Plant Photonics and welcome to another video on everything grow related. And today we're going to talk about, yeah, you probably guessed it, ventilation. Now, I actually started looking into ventilation a while ago for a project that I was working on and that will be shown in the second video. There's actually going to be two videos. First one is just a brief introduction to ventilation followed by a bit of information on the different choices you have for fans. And you might be surprised that some of the information in there is very useful, so please watch the video. And anyway, I went over to a friend's house once, about a year ago, and as soon as we went in, I could hear what sounded like a vacuum cleaner going. And uh, I asked him what it was. He said, oh, it's the extractor fan on his grow tent. And judging by the volume of it, I was expecting something huge. But no, it was just a 120 by 120 tent with uh, about nine autos in it. And he had a massive fan in there, which was way more than he needed. And that got me thinking, so now I'm making a video on it. So, okay, let's take a look at the reasons why you have ventilation. Okay, now if you ask people, they'll give you probably four answers. Now, the first one I disagree with to an extent. Uh, changing the air to replenish the CO2 for the plant. Okay, now basically ask yourself this question if you were to zip yourself into your grow tent would you suffocate uh, chances are pretty good you wouldn't might get a bit stuffy unless it's a you know a completely sealed cabinet with you know all silicon and rubber seals on the door there's enough air leaking in that uh, to keep the plants happy but we'll say okay fine change the air you're only looking at maybe changing the air in there a couple of times an hour now, I'm not talking about cubic meters, I'm just talking about how often you need to change it because obviously, depending on the size of the tent, you're gonna need more or less ventilation, depending on the size. Okay, so the second question, the second point would be humidity control and to avoid problems with mold. Now, you've got a lot of growing media in there, you've got um, rock wool, you've got soil, whatever. Uh, chances are it's warmer inside than outside, you're gonna get a fair bit of evaporation and one thing you do not want is mold you think spider mites are bad if you've never had mold uh, uh they'll completely destroy your plants in about two days if you if you don't uh, immediately remove the infected plants so that's a fairly important one and i'd say probably about six times an hour change the air in there about every 10 minutes that should be enough to keep the the plants happy uh temperature control okay that's going to depend obviously on the external temperature in the, the surrounding room and what your lighting is. If you're in a grow tent, you know, normally now you'd be looking at lead lights or something else. Uh, HPS throws out a lot of heat. If you are using HPS, I suggest strongly that you use a, a cool tube on there with its own fan. It, for one thing, it, it helps protect the uh, tent from the bulb uh, just in case anything gets loose, falls over, whatever. Uh, but anyway, if you're just running air through the tent to lower the temperature to keep it under, you know, 28 degrees centigrade, uh, it's going to depend on your, your lighting and the, the, the external temperature. Somewhere between uh, once, every f about five, once every five minutes or more, you know, longer period of time, sort of like 15, every 15 minutes, every five minutes, it's going to depend on, on the heat output. And the last one is odor control. Now, for a lot of people, this is one of the main ones. Uh, as you know, the plants are pretty smelly and can really stink your house up. Now, that's an interesting one because all you need essentially for odor control is a slightly negative pressure in the tent. In other words, the pressure inside the tent is a bit lower than the air pressure outside the tent, and that keeps the uh, the smell from escaping it's rather like if you've watched any of the uh, movies like contagion or uh, any of these pan epidemic movies that have been quite popular due to covid uh, you'll notice in the labs that that's how they work their suit is pressurized so that no air can get in and the room that they're in is under negative pressure so if there is a leak it'll be air leaking in from outside into the dangerous room rather than the other way around and that's basically what you want to do in in your tent you just it's going to depend how much air you need to pump through is going to depend on the other factors like how much you're changing the air to keep the temperature down um, basically you just make to crank up the the flow until the smell drops 
Now, I do recommend when you get a fan, if possible, get one with variable speed. Uh, because the, a lot of the fans are a lot more powerful than you need for a grow tent. And it's nice if you can adjust the speed. Sometimes you can plug them into an external controller or get one of these uh, fan motor controllers. But make sure with the grow shop or the vendor that they're compatible with these. Now, ventilation, obviously you need a fan. There's actually two main classes of fan that we're going to look at. This is the first one. It's called an axial fan. Yeah, I am just put this up because it's something you're familiar with. They're called an axial fan because the blades are arranged around the axis. Now, you're probably going to see more something like this. This is actually what's known as the ducted axial fan. This is one of those cheap and nasty ones you can get at your local hardware shop for real, you know, $15 or something, 15 euros. Uh, they're usually used for like bathroom extractors. They're pretty useless, okay? And uh, usually quite cheap and noisy. I would not recommend buying one of these. Now, normally you'll see something more like these guys. This is a, a much more powerful, higher quality one. And again, you can see where you put your tube on there. This is normally the intake side, and that's the outlet. You can actually see the arrow on the side. That's another thing when you install them, make sure you get them the right way around. Now, axial fans, uh, they're cheap compared to the other type of fan, which is the radial fans. They move quite a lot of air. Yeah, so if you try one out in the shop, if you're able to plug it in, it'll seem quite powerful. Uh, depending on the quality, they're quite noisy. In fact, you don't get a lot of flow if it's really quiet. Usually, you know, they're not hugely good at this and they tend to require a lot of speed and power to, to really shift much air. Now, there's another thing is that this, what's well, low static pressure. Now, what that means is if you block off the end of this tube, say you run it into a, a small box and you measure the air pressure inside that box compared to the air pressure outside of the box. The difference between them is the static pressure. Now static pressure is actually really important. Uh, for example, this type of fan here, these axial fans, the, the Society of Engineers uh, or whatever they are, the association body for installing large ventilation systems in big buildings. Uh, they say that this type of fan should only be used with about 15 feet of duct. Uh, and that's only if you're not using any kind of filters or screens. The thing is that you need the static pressure to be able to blow or suck air through a filter. So these tend not to work very well with filters and you're probably going to be using a filter. So these ones aren't really highly recommended. Their, their main thing is that they're cheap. Now, if you can't afford another type of fan, you're stuck with these. The other type of fans are these. These are radial fans. Now in here, the blades are arranged around the outside of the fan. And the air actually goes in here and then comes out the side. That's basically blown out evenly around the edges. Now, here's an example. This is how uh, it looks. This drawing's a little bit out of scale because this should be much bigger up here. It should expand more than is shown in this diagram. Now, you can see the air gets drawn in and then it gets blown out around the edge and the shape of the casing, this is called a snail shell case, is designed, it expands up here, allows the air to move and puts it out this way. Now these are extremely efficient, and if they're good quality, very quiet and powerful. Uh, and they also have very high static pressure. Uh, this particular style, the snail shell, has the probably the highest static pressure of any fan design you can get. Now, if you go into a shop, this is the snail shell type. There's a problem with that, and that is that these are designed to bolt onto uh, ducts, yeah, a uh, screw or a bolt into place. They're not really meant for the round tubing that we usually use for ventilation in grow spaces. Now, of course, you can easily make something up to adapt it, and I'll show you something that uses that in a minute. 
When you go into a grow shop, you'll probably see this is a metal one and this is a plastic one. Now, the way these work is you've got your fan spinning in here, but instead of it venting it out the side and the, the thing expanding and venting out the side, you have a space all the way around the outside. So when the air comes up, when the air comes off the blades, it's basically forced up this way and out of here. This is the outlet side on this fan. There are little fins inside, you can see one there, that help direct the flow and reduce turbulence. Uh, these work quite well. Uh, you do lose some efficiency because the air is forced to change direction quite radically. Uh, so they're not quite as efficient as the snail shell ones. But the good thing about them is they're quieter than actual fans for the flow, good volume of air, high static pressure, and they can be used with filters. The downside is they're more complex to build, uh, have more parts, require better quality components, and they are more expensive, expensive than axial fans, and they're also fairly bulky. However, they are better. Now, going back to the snail shell design, what you can do is build one of these. This particular one's an acoustic enclosure. You can see it's got the sound damping foam on the inside. This is just MDF, and these are standard uh, six inch or four inch or whatever uh, ducting fittings, and you can pick all of this stuff, stuff up in your local hardware shop. Now, your hardware shop is actually a good place to go if it's a decent size one. They will quite often have these type of fans in there, and because they don't have the four marijuana growing bit in the description, they're much, much cheaper. Now, what they've got here, these are just rubber O-ring seals, or you could use uh, rubber uh, washers from the outdoor hose or something like that. They're good and strong. Some hooks, and this is just a bit of the flexible uh, hosing that you get attached to one of these, which has been bolted onto there. Uh, these are extremely quiet and very powerful. The air is drawn in through here into the box and goes in the side. You do need to make sure that you've got a reasonable amount of space between the side of the fan and the cover when it's bolted on. But that's a, quite an economic choice if you're handy with tools. If not, these things are ridiculously expensive, like this is maybe a 50 euro, 50 dollar, 50 pound fan. Uh, and if you bought one of these assembled like this, you'd probably be looking at uh, 200, 300 euros, dollars, pounds, whatever. So. You know, if you can do it yourself, it's a much cheaper option. Now, one thing I will say is that for all of these fans, even like this type, try buying them from a hardware shop first or a specialist ventilation, heating, cooling place. You can often find exactly the same fan with a different name on it and a much, much better price. You know, marijuana, anything you order for marijuana instantly gets more expensive than if it's for general gardening or something like that. And uh, these types of fans are really good. In fact, this is a bathroom extractor fan, a high quality one. And as you can possibly tell, it's exactly the same. It's one of these uh, radial blower fans. The fans going around here in this way, drawing the air in the center and then venting it out the side here. So it's not just, uh, I'm not being picky when it comes to the type of fan. I'm saying that these uh, radio fans are by far the best. Okay, well that pretty much covers everything you probably wanted to know about fans and, and uh, the basics of ventilation. I will make one further point. If when you're buying a fan, check and see if it has a ball bearing motor. Now unfortunately there's not really any way of telling just by looking at it. Hopefully it will say on the package. Uh, any decent quality fan will almost certainly have a ball bearing motor in there. Some of the cheap ones may not. They'll probably have what are called oil bearing, oil bearings. And those are just a little brass or a bronze sleeve, centered sleeve, uh, that's been soaked in oil. They have a lifespan of about 5,000 hours, which whereas uh, a decent quality ball bearing one will go 50,000, no problem. So it's definitely worth uh, getting one with ball bearing. And last point is always keep it clean. 
uh, every once in a while, it, if you're running a filter and everything else, it's probably not going to be much of a problem. But uh, if you're not, say, just running it through for a cool tube, you definitely want to give it a clean every six months or so. If you get dust building up, it throws the balance off, makes it noisier, and shortens the life. Okay, in the second video, which will be coming in a few days, we're going to be looking at filter systems and also the different types of carbon, activated carbon, you can get in there. There is actually several different types, and they're very different in their properties and their performance. And finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a really, really cool new product that we've developed, which is uh, filter and fan related. It's completely unique, and I think it's going to be a huge hit. We're actually, I've already applied for patent on it, and I'm going to be contacting uh, several large manufacturers about licensing the idea off of me. So if you want to see that, watch the second video. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please uh, click like and subscribe. And I hope you learned from this, and I look forward to seeing you again, and happy growing.